So, very good afternoon to all. And uh, at the outset, let me thanks uh, to nice group of chemicals, the uh, South based, particularly Chennai based uh, company, uh, our industry house, who has shaked hands with the university uh, to share the knowledge uh, among the students, farmers, and the other technicians. And uh, and uh, this is my proud privilege to interact with uh, you all people and uh, let me start the topic directly without consuming much more time today our discussion is water and soil quality management in aquaculture and uh, my introduction is uh, not needed at all by this time so let's go to the topic with water and soil quality management how to improve what is the importance of soil and the water and uh, with regard to aquaculture and fish productions. So before going to that, let me have some uh, this, a Hindi proverb, Machli ar jal ki rani hai, jeevan uska pani hai, haat lagao to dar jayegi, bahar nikal to mar jayegi. Fish is such an innocent animal, nevertheless it opposes anything. Or, it drinks even water, rather it cleans the water. So it's a, a very a unique creature and a very selfless creature. And also it is giving a good income to major sector of the people. And another thing is that with regard to water, it is such an important, it is life to all. It is life to all. Because whether it is plant kingdom, whether it is animal kingdom, without water, the survivability is a big question. Without water, no such organism can survive. And now it is our duty to keep our water neat and clean and to keep our water productive and to keep our water a quality one. And for your information, I will tell you, Fish is an indicator species. If the fish can survive in, in, in water, that water can be a huge one. So many such industries, before releasing their water to the either river or any other stream, or even to the ocean, or even to the seas, so they put the water in that uh, released water, and they put the fish in that released water. If the fish survives, then they, they thought that, yes, the water is no can be used or can be in the usable form. So with this a bit background about the importance of water and importance of fish, let's go to my next slide, that is water quality. What we need to know to keep our fish alive? Not only the fish is the candidate species or target species in water, many other species are there, starting from mollus and uh, also algae, and many other species are there also and uh, to mainly keeping fish and shrimp are uh, this uh, target or candid species we are thinking about the water quality now it is our duty it is our concern to maintain this water quality no earlier days earlier days no such uh, maintenance of the water quality uh, just release the fish and uh, get the fish out of water after certain months or certain period but with the in case of time, with the development of science, people are giving due importance to the water quality. And now the industry house, they also came forward with several different types of products, how to measure the water quality and the water parameters. So let us discuss one by one. So to a great extent, the success and failure of fiscal culture is determined by the water quality. Definitely, if the water quality is bad, the success will not be there. Definitely, it will invite the failure of the culture. If the water quality is good, then it will give a good harvest. And with regard to water quality, why it is important? Because here the fish lives in it and are supported by it and receive oxygen from it and also excreted in it. So that is the medium where the fish survives, where the fish lives. That is the house for fish. Though the topic is very simple, 
the water and soil but it is a fast topic and it uh, needs a insight an insightness or it uh, need, needs to be studied thoroughly to have good production or to have good health of the organisms next with regard to water quality why it is so important if we we'll think then water quality factors influence and interact with each other and what may cause problems in one situation may, may be harmless in another situation again i will tell you water is such a fragile and dynamic medium water is such a fragile and dynamic medium where the fish just now where the fish survives or just now you are measuring one uh, this parameter after some hours or after some minutes or after some period again the parameter will change it is very much fragile it is very much dynamic okay so to before measuring the water quality we should know when, when to sample the water or when to sample the soil how to sample when to sample what is the frequency of the sampling what is the time of sampling and if it is all these things are not correct then it will give erroneous result definitely the company people they are or the company technicians they are giving due training or adequate training to the farmers but the farmers are not so much intelligent to follow all those things in toto and that gives the erroneous result or incorrect result which leads to further complication and to water quality most disease problems can be avoided by management of water quality these are the two things only water and soil if you can manage then we can manage several other things several other things. this includes maintaining the water quality at a level that provides the environment conditions to the peace health and growth so if water quality we are managing properly then the fish health is not problem their growth is also not problem we are targeting a higher productions when we manage the water quality earlier we are getting some kg of fish or some quintals of fish from hectare of water or acre of water now it is at least 10 times more 10 or 15 tons per hectare it is because of water quality management soil quality management and several other management measures several other management maybe intensive maybe intensive more the we are we are going for intensifications more we should manage the water quality whether it is biotic systems whether it is rs systems whether any other systems the water quality is very very important and for that several chemicals we are using but before that we should sanguine enough we should be we should uh, Cases enough. We should have uh, due knowledge. We should have adequate knowledge. What should be the water quality? How much? So, so one more time. Am I clear? Hello, so one more, madam. Yes, yes, yes. If any problem, please respond. No, no, sir. You are absolutely clear and audible. Okay. So this is about the disease problems with regard to water quality. Then when we we'll talk about aquaculture, aquaculture is nothing but the underwater agriculture. And aquaculture, as I have already told you, it is not targeting only fish also. It targets the crustaceans, the mollusks, the algae, and algae and the other organisms which have some commercial values. Which have some commercial values. Now you know this algae, various types of this uh, oceanic algae are there. Now it is a very good medicinal values. Also, it is the farming of aquatic animals and plants, including breeding, raising, and harvesting all types of water environments in controlled situations. In controlled situations. So this is in an odd cell about agriculture. Then what are the factors affecting the health of the fish? Why we are doing all those things? Why we are so much concerned about water and soil health? Why we are doing uh, uh, so much exercise or so much giving so much importance to water and soil quality parameters? Because it is affecting the health of the fish. It is affecting the health of the fish, the indirectly affecting the production level and also affecting indirectly the economic conditions of the farmers. 
Besides the water and soil quality parameters, the other parameters like ecological parameters, quality of his seed and quality of feed and nutritional balanced diet are also important factors which are to be considered. But for today's discussion, it bits around the water and soil quality parameters. And we will concentrate on this. And with that, let us talk. If we we'll think about the fish health, then eight different parameters are working, particularly starting from the temperature changes, handling, handling, then transport, water quality, pollution, high density, feed management, and breeding cycles. All these factors, they are affecting directly or indirectly to the fish health. So if we we'll think about uh, in a deep sense, then I will talk about uh, this official status in a deeper sense. If we we'll think about the host, then we have to consider its species, age, strain. All these things has to be considered to have good fish health. And also, if you think about the facilities, what type of handling and density and design, what type of facilities are they are? Whether we are, going go, whether we are going for intensification, semi-intensification, or traditional way of concern. Then think about the environment. Whether this is, when you will think about the environment, definitely we have to think about water quality and also organic load as well as temperature. And with regard to nutrition, again, it's a vital parameter which has the schedule, quantity, and quality are very much important. And with regard to pathogen, whether uh, we have to consider the strain, whether it is a very severe strain, or and its type and species are to be considered. Then physiological status, we have to think about the stress and acquired immunity. So all these factors contribute to the physical status. In detail, I have to talk about this. And in relation to fish health, if we think, then if we'll Suppose we want to predict some higher productions, then we have to analyze thoroughly and we have to take the decision accordingly and we have to man, you have to give adequate management measures in that regard and we have to monitor it and have control if any problem will be there. Then and there only we can predict the higher productions. Then let us think about the fish health with regard to external factors and internal factors. External factors includes the pollution, the natural factors and the climate. And the internal factors include farm management, fish culture, and fish activities. And think about the water management, then it is your it is purpose, domestic purpose, irrigation purpose, or industrial purpose, whatever the purpose may be. But I told you earlier, it is a very intricate and a very fragile sector or wild media where the physical parameters are working, chemical parameters are working, and biological parameters are working. How these parameters are working and what are the exact factors are working, let us discuss. With regard to chemical parameters, the gases, oxygen, oxygen, H2S, ammonia, etc., metals, iron, nutrients, nitrogen, etc., pesticides, other organic compounds. If you think about the biological properties, then it is bacteria, virus, protozoans, phytoplankton, zooplankton, etc. If you think about the physical properties, then it is color, smell, temperature, taste, and turbidity. My whole aim of telling all these water quality is we have to measure all those things, whether it is temperature, whether it is turbidity, whether it is oxygen, whether it is pH, whether it is ammonia, whether it is nitrate, nitrate, any, any parameter. Now the industry house has come up with instant measurement of parameter. And now the industry house has come up with certain chemicals and certain compounds to have measurement at the pond site itself. And they, 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 these are carryable uh, chemicals or carryable kits. Are there. So that we will also discuss. And with regard to conservation of water, if you think nowadays, you know, it is very important. And particularly in South, particularly Bangalore and many other areas of Chennai and several other areas of uh, Hyderabad also, they say without rainwater harvesting, they are not allowing for construction of the house also. This is very important. Future days depends upon the uh, rainwater harvesting. And when you think about this, uh, and we should not use this drinkable water for fish farming. Another thing is that. Very important thing. Drinkable water should not be used for fish farming. Then we can recycle the water. We can use the derelict waters we can use whatever water is available we should not disturb the they say bottom uh, sources of water that is the uh, ground sources of water we should not use these drinkable sources of water rather we should depend upon uh, we should conserve the water we should re uh, reserve the water 
and the excess water which is flowing nowadays this rain is say, heavy rain is done and all this rain water is going to the ocean so if you would have facility to reserve all those things then it would have been of tremendous use to uh, go for this culture and many other uses also many houses are there they do have such facilities or many farms are there they do have also these facilities now let us so with regard to problems in aquaculture due to different sectors with regard to problems in different sectors if you will think then you see in a hundred percent uh, in a, a circle or in a graph then you will find parasitic infestations, bacterial disease, and alterations in the water quality. Alterations in the water quality. These alterations of water quality counts a lot. Counts a lot. It also causes the problems in aquaculture. It causes the diseases. It causes the motility of the fish. It causes the motility of the organisms also. I have already told you how fragile the water is, how dynamic the water is. Several intercutting, we cannot conclude any parameter that is fully responsible for causing the stress. So, whether it is, we cannot conclude whether it is oxygen, whether it is temperature, because all these things are very much related. When oxygen is less, maybe due to temperature, maybe due to BOD more, or maybe due to several other factors. Whether temperature is more means again it is leading to several other factors. pH, high or low, several other factors. So we'll talk about all those things gradually, but I just my aim of telling this water quality are they very fragile and dynamic. So we have to take care of it very seriously. Fish culture, as it is very much uh, lucrative, very much profit making, and also similarly risk bearing. Risk bearing. More the profit, more the risk. Less the profit, less the risk. Or less the risk, less the profit. So whether now it is up to us, up to the farmers, whether they will take the risk and gain more or they will just spend some money and earn little whatever they want. Okay. So it depends upon the status of the or mental status of the farmers. Next, with regard to water quality parameters, mainly the three parameters, the physical, chemical and biological parameters are very much important. And they, what the, the different variables of this para water are temperature, dissolved oxygen, total ammonia nitrogen, ammonia, nitrate nitrogen, nitrate nitrogen, alkalinity, hardness, pH, carbon dioxide. We will discuss all those parameters. Let us first come to this pH. Very important. What is pH? pH is the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentrations. This concept of pH first introduced in the year 1909 by the a Danish scientist or Danish chemist, Soren Sorensen. So first he designed this pH. This is the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentrations. This pH ranges from 0 to 14. Now my question is that why the range is like this, 0 to 14? The answer is very simple because suppose one molar solutions of hydrogen ion it ranges about zero and one molar solution of hydroxide ions it ranges up to 14 so the range he designed as zero to 14 within this range the ph will vary and seven is the neutral factor below this is acidic after this is alkaline so we do not want more acidic ph or more alkaline ph we want a little alkaline pH like 7.5 to 8.5. We have to maintain the pH of the pond water in this way because more acidic pH will invite more pathogenic load and the more alkaline water also it will not allow the growth of the pieces. Okay. So with this, if we think the optimal pH range is 7.5 to 8.5, but little alkaline side is always better than little acidic side. So this is the concept given by the Danish scientist Soren Sorensen and uh, now even it is practiced. But how this pH has to be measured? So this pH range already I have told you 7.5 to 8.5 and uh, if more than uh, less than 4 or 3 and more than 11 is a uh, fertile and it is dead points for this. And suppose pH is less, then we can go for applications uh, of calcium carbonate or calcium bicarbonate or um, uh, agricultural lime or limestone etc but suppose immediate increase of uh, 
pH is required, then we can go for calcium oxide applications. But we should try to avoid this calcium oxide application because sudden increase in the pH, again, it may stress to the fish. So, but we have to measure this pH very thoroughly, very correctly. When to measure, how to measure, this is all important things I will tell you. These are the effects of pH on buffering systems. And I have already told you it is a negative hydrogen ion concentrations. So I am not uh, uh, discussing all those things. Just uh, let me go about this uh, doses of lime. Suppose increase the pH like this. So pH 4 to 4.5 when it is there, less the pH, more amount of lime has to be added. That is 1000 kg per hectare per year. And the, if pH is 4.5 to 5.5, 700 kg per hectare per year. If pH range is 5.5 to 6.5, then dose is 500 kg per hectare. It has been noticed that higher the uh, they say pH, lower the dose of the lime is required. So if you think about the, this is about the water, and if you think about the soil conditions also, pH range this much highly acidic, which requires also 2000 kg of calcium carbonate per kg per hectare. Similarly, with the increase of pH also, this lime requirement has been reduced. So this is about uh, this uh, pH. Now, these are the methods, uh, they say, uh, earlier this pH paper has been used. This is also till now people are using this pH paper. Water testing kits are now available. I'll tell you for your information, various companies are coming up with the various types of kits, starting from uh, they say, um, high media, uh, um, your SRL, Mark, and uh, NICE, and uh, sub Titan Biotech. Several companies, they are coming up with several products, but of late, this uh, nice, uh, they are coming with very good products. And uh, I have seen we are also using, we are also using in the laboratory as well as uh, for this, we are advocating to the farmers to go for it compared to the, it is very much, the price is very much competitive to the market and also uh, giving correct result uh, as far as my, uh, our knowledge is concerned. And uh, now the question is that when to measure the pH and how to measure the pH? Usually, preferably before the rise of sun or just uh, at the time of that, in the morning hours, the pH will be major, not in the hot sun, etc. And the pH has to be measured from different point, uh, points of the pond, strategic points. And uh, that uh, strategic points, uh, the average should be made for water. And similarly, for soils, also different soils, uh, uh, samples should be collected accordingly, the uh, pH should be measured. These pH test kits are very much, uh, they say, compatible and very much uh, con uh, conducive or very much congenial. It can be taken direct to the field. But one thing has to be remembered. Nevertheless, one should bring the water from the pond and measure the pH at the laboratory. This will give incorrect result or erroneous result. Because I have already told you, water quality changes with the, uh, once it is lifted from the environment to another environment. Because it has interference with oxygen, it has interference with the temperature, it has interference with the several parameters also. So pH has to be measured or any other parameter should be measured at the pond site itself. Okay. So this is a, the pH meter or pH test kits and this pH meter and pH paper, uh, litmus papers, etc. And particularly, um, this is widely used and the farmers are quite common or well versed with these things. Particularly, shrimp farmers, they are very much aware about this. And also, the advanced farmers like uh, bioflock farmers or RAS farmers or uh, the farmers which are of, uh, they are doing the little intensifications of the culture, they are using these test kits. And regarding soil testing kits, they have also very good uh, soil testing kits and it is also in the affordable range. Okay. And uh, this water water quality testing kits also, uh, just I am showing for information sake. Okay. Then we will go for dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen, it is of paramount importance as like that of your um, pH. So now the question is that uh, pH takes oxygen. Which oxygen? One has oh, this question has to be answered. Which oxygen? It is the dissolved oxygen. It is not the H2O piece will break that bond and it will take. It is the in between the water molecules, the oxygen which is a settled or which is saturated, that is, is taking. That is taking. Then it depends upon the density 
of the feces or stocking density of the feces and depends upon the plankton conditions and depends upon the algal conditions depends upon the climate also because uh, several other parameters they affect the dissolved oxygen content however dissolved oxygen content of 4 to 5 ppm or more than 6 ppm is always desirable for, for this uh, fish always good for fish optimal conditions for growth of the fish less than ppm 3 ppm is very much bad and we should avoid it and we should immediately increase the oxygen content by any means whether by aerations or by any applications of any uh, oxygen in uh, an answer actually oxygen and maybe oxygen tablets oxygen powders or maybe hydrogen peroxide or maybe potassium permanganate or maybe any other means or maybe any other means which increases the uh, uh, increases the oxygen content. Next, uh, the water quality variables. Uh, the first, it is the limiting factor for growth, uh, growth and well as fish cell. If oxygen is low, then it will definitely limit the growth as well as the health will be affected. Solubility decreases with the increase of temperature and elevations. In the summer days, definitely the this the oxygen content is very low, particularly R all and also in the uh, rainy seasons and uh, sometimes the uh, oxygen content is very low because at that time the photosynthesis is very low due to poor sunlight, poor sunlight. Respiratory, respiration rate increases with the increase of temperature, activity and feeding. In general, minimum DO should be more than 60%, that is more than 5 ppm. Okay. So next, if you will think about this uh, dissolved oxygen, again, temp uh, along with that, the other parameters are also related, that is temperature, salinity, elevation effects, uh, dissolved oxygen, or uh, all the things, they are quite related. All the parameters, around 20 different parameters of the water are there. They are highly intricate factors. So they are highly interactive factors, and one cannot conclude or one cannot draw conclusion about these parameters solely responsible for causing the problem in the pond or in the with the piece. Say, then we have to measure the digital oxygen, preferably in the early morning hours at a different points, at a different points of the pond and a different depths also we should take and we should take the average. But all in a sudden, we should not conclude that he has a low digital oxygen. But always in the pond, it should be there. And in the shrimp pond, and particularly in the bioflux systems, oxygen is very much important. Oxygen may, uh, should be maintained. And uh, some systems are, uh, particularly RA systems, 24 hours aeration uh, is must. And in uh, Banami also, if, uh, if the um, uh, oxygen is very less, then it will cause uh, the modality of the uh, shrimps, particularly. I'll tell you one information, uh, uh, this uh, oxygen con concentration requirement for Banami ponds, particularly for one hectare pond, one HP rate, uh, um, particularly for producing 300 to 500 kg of Banami, one HP rate of is required. But for calculating this, uh, for peace, then we have to see that, uh, yes, the oxygen requirement should be more than 6 ppm. Okay. So these are some of the standards we have to follow and to uh, to have uh, good production level to have good production level then again oxygen concentrations depend upon this bod and biological oxygen demand and chemical oxygen demand. the quantum of oxygen required by the different biological organisms starting from plankton to other biological organisms present in the uh, pond environment is the biological oxygen demand if more bod then oxygen content is less and cod is chemical oxygen demand the quantum of oxygen required for different types of chemical reactions are the COD that also requires oxygen. That also requires oxygen. And if that is more, oxygen content is less. So BOD, COD are all the things uh, it has to be measured. It has to be in the knowledge before concluding the oxygen is the fertility factor. Okay. Next, digital oxygen, the desirable limit already I have told you. I'm not uh, repeating. But suppose oxygen content is less then we have to uh, recycle the water. Uh, we can use the aerators or some pumps to recycle the waters and uh, some physical control of these aquatic plants and management of phytoplankton growth is essential. And uh, all of a sudden, we can add also potassium permanganate. Uh, it will also increase the oxygen content to some extent. And uh, applications of hydrogen peroxides, H2O2, it will also increase the oxygen content to a good, uh, uh, good way or in a good amount. And also it is uh, it acts as a disinfectant, 
and they um, also oxygen tablets, oxygen powders are very much essential. And uh, all the farmers are advised to keep all those things. These are essential medicines, and they, it, it can save the crop. It can save the crop. Next, uh, I have already told you this scale, and uh, these are the different uh, uh, kits which are being used. I'm not going detail about the kits, how you are using, but I will tell you in one confined box, which is a uh, handy, which can be taken to the field. And there are some solution, two solutions are there and it has to be mixed and they have this, um, the uh, quantum color, uh, the color index will be measured through uh, this uh, and it will give an indication what is the concentration of Okay. That we are also that we can also do through uh, these uh, titration methods through inclusion methods, but that is uh, cumbersome and uh, it has to uh, to bring to the laboratory. But these things can be taken to the on site or to the field itself, so that it is very handy and we can uh, get uh, the accurate and get also accurate result. That is also no problem. And we can also have different probes to measure the oxygen content. Okay, and also these different test kits are there for different companies. And just I am showing some examples of uh, this a uh, nice group of chemicals which they are uh, having this uh, test kit. That we are also using many other farmers and many other companies, many other uh, these uh, laboratories they are using. They are uh, now uh, marketing all those things. It is uh, running there. Okay, and with temperature, temperature is a very vital factor. It is controlling different enzyme synthesis, hormone synthesis, and also growth parameters of the fish. And uh, if uh, the adequate temperature range is uh, 28 to 32 degrees centigrade, oh. less than 15 degrees centigrade temperature is sublethal, and more than 35 degrees centigrade is also lethal to the fishes. But nowadays, with the increase of temperature, global temperature, the fishes are being adopted, but it is being stressed. So we should give adequate setting to avoid this temperature. Sometimes we are advocating to go for circulation of the water, to go for pumping of the water, to add water if possible. Then these are the same different uh, test kits for measuring the temperature. And I'll tell you with regard to temperature, Temperature, the sun is the main factor and which influences the salt water also. It affects the survival, abundance and swimming speed and growth rate, feeding. The temperature is the main factor for breeding also. Temperature is the, thing. Temperature is the factor for uh, growth. So it has been observed that, it has been observed that with every 10 degree increase in some, uh, they say temperature, the metabolic rate almost doubles, particularly in the winter season the feeding rate is being less it is because the metabolic rate is very less the consumption rate is very less the consumption of feed is very less because it will not allow the hormone synthesis it will not it, the hormone synthesis rate is reduced the enzyme synthesis rate is reduced because that is all related to temperature so sometimes in that uh, they say uh, in order to make the hatchery uh, run uh, um, Hatchery percentage survivability in order to increase the hatchery percentage survivability, sometimes they are, are making the arrangement of thermostatic arrangements to increase the temperatures. It controls the reaction rate of the chemicals, influences the solubility of the gases in water, influences the toxicity of ammonia and therapotents, and optimum temperature for tilapia growth is 85 to 88 degree Fahrenheit. So you see, the, already we have told about the temperature, and uh, we know the uh, without temperature, perhaps many other functions uh, many other functions will be in the defunct states defunct states, whether it is feeding whether it is uh, breeding whether it, any other things any other things enter world enter universe will be in a will be in a fault if the temperature is not there without sun without temperature nothing is possible nothing is possible life is uh, become horrible without uh, sun without sun so then we will come to another parameter that is turbidity. This is also another important parameter and how to measure the turbidity also. And the turbidity is one factor which is maybe temperate turbidity, maybe permanent turbidity. Temperate turbidity may be due to suspended solids. And the permanent turbidity may be due to plankton or maybe due to some other factors which are responsible for causing the problems. Turbidity up to certain level can be variable. For fish, it is 27 to 30 centimeter 
uh, can be uh, 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 they, it can be used for physical purpose for shrimp it is still less less than 27 centimeters uh, um, because uh, that needs a very clear water that needs a very clear water so uh, suppose turbidity is more then we have it will create problem particularly it will clog the gills and it will invite several other mycotic problems and also it hampers the respirations it hampers the respirations so addition of some lime particularly calcium oxide or calcium carbonate and the alarm to the pond the turbidity can be reduced and particularly newly constructed ponds you will find turbidity more and in that newly constructed ponds it is advisable to add some organic base some organic matter or vermicompost also to reduce this turbidity to reduce this turbidity and particularly it is a in a very clear water application of organic manures and inorganic fertilizers are very effective for growth of the planktons okay so some solvase is required not more but without solvase the plankton growth the growth of the feces is not possible so these are the different parameters such as we know and this is a user method traditional method of uh, measuring and uh, measuring the uh, transparency and uh, this turbidity test kit also now are now is available so we can measure very nicely very effectively the turbidity and turbidity also counts a lot to, towards the growth of the pieces and towards the growth of uh, the uh, syringe also so turbidity meter and i'll tell you for all these different parameters now the industry also has come up with the solutions yes uh, in situ conditions they can uh, our farmers our entrepreneurs they can make use of the, these kits and they can get the result at the pond site itself or the farming point itself and we also want our scientists and they are the educationists we also want such type of result because we do not want erroneous results bringing the water to the laboratory and getting this erroneous results hmm. so this is with regard to turbidity now let us come to some other factors that is a uh, very much important that is a uh, ammonical nitrogen nitrate nitrogen and uh, nitrate nitrogen and ammonia also if you think about this uh, nitrogen then it is it will come to the uneaten foods particularly this waste uh, with a uh, ultimately converted into ammonia and this uh, algal and uh, food debris also it will produce the ammonia and this fish used to by used by algae they also produce uh, this uh, ammonia also broken down by nitrosomonas bacteria this is nitrogen cycle actually and this is in the detail i do not want to elaborate because one cycle if i'll describe it will uh, take much more time just uh, you know uh, you know to avoid this uh, time constraints just i will tell you the importance of nitro uh, ammonia and uh, mm, nitrate nitrogen and nitrate nitrogen. among these three things uh, you will think they say uh, ammonia should be nil or maximum 0.01 to 0.05 ppm is uh, uh, acceptable not more than that however nitrate nitrogen is somewhat stable but nitrate nitrogen is nevertheless it is uh, stable and it will cause problem it will cause problem but ammonia whether it is bioflock system whether it is say vanami farming and whether it is face farming it causes the mortality of the pieces for they say fry ponds or tingling ponds it causes tremendous problems the uneaten feeds mostly the it will cause the organ matter suspended in the water and deposited in the bottom from that they say microbial decompositions and they, that also consume oxygen more the amount of they say uneaten feeds that will consume oxygen for decompositions and it leads the formation of ammonia carbon dioxide phosphorus etc then the plankton and benthic growth uh, benthos also grows and like this way uh, mostly the source is use of uneaten feeds and which is these uneaten feeds are nothing but this is highly nitrogenous contents are there because uh, now every suppose it is uh, fish feed or shrimp feed shrimp feed contains more than 45 percent of nitrogen 50 percent of nitrogen or uh, protein matter protein content protein is nothing but this nitrogen base and similarly the fish also in fish feed more than 25 to 30 percent protein is there so all these things contains this more amount of nitrogen base and this nitrogen base if it is properly consumed then it will not cause so much problem but if the honest piece uh, feeds and the fecal matter re uh, released from the pieces or from the streams they cause the increase in the ammonia concentrations again it has to be measured properly so this ammonia test case is very important 
and they also nitrate test kits, nitrate test kits, particularly for Bahami farming, these multi-water parameter kits, water multi-parameter kits are very much essential. Nowadays it is available. We are advocating the farmers number of times in number of trainings. We are telling to the farmers to go over the purchase of each individual farmer they should have. Now many aqualabs are there, they are using such type of things. They have PCR, RT-PCR and several other things along with these test kits also. We are advocating to the farmers to have their own units because this is very simple. This is very simple, as simple as uh, uh, this even a class 3-4 students uh, or uh, fifth standard students can um, uh, get the result of these things very easily. So this is about the ammonia test kits and uh, these uh, nitrate test kits. And uh, for detailed information, if anybody wants, and uh, these uh, company people, they are on your doorstep. Just you put your requirements, and uh, they can also explain you. They can also deliver you at the pond site itself or at the farm site itself. And with regard to water testing kits, and for measuring also, this another another two important parameters are there. One is alkalinity, another is hardness. That also these test kits are there. Just I will tell you this uh, about, about this uh, alkalinity hardness. That's, that uh, alkalinity is nothing but this uh, carbonates and bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium. So this is the buffering capacity of the water. It absorbs the soil. It absorbs the soil from the soil. Mm. It absorbs the acids and bases from the soil. High alkalinity prevents the pH fluctuations. Maintain the levels between 75 to 120 ppm or milligram per liter. 7 grams of alkalinity consumed about 1 gram of, gram of ammonia. And about to, what is the hardness? Hardness is nothing but uh, this is, it again categorizes into two forms. That is one is permanent hardness, another is temporary hardness. Permanent hardness is due to the presence of the divalent uh, salts that is calcium and magnesium. And uh, temporary hardness is due to the presence of these sodium salts. This uh, permanent hardness gives uh, the, they do not give a foam in the water but uh, temporary hardness gives foam in the water but uh, hard water is not at all good but somewhat some hardness is required somewhat some alkalinity is required alkalinity label and ranges i'll tell you and uh, they say uh, this is the test kits and uh, if you think about uh, this alkalinity hardness i have told about these carbonates and bicarbonates and hydroxides um, uh, which causes the hardness and this hardness acts as a profile factor hardness acts as the profile factor if the uh, and if you find this a uh, uh, 0 to 75 milligram per liter for soft uh, it will uh, lead to soft hardness and uh, moderately hard 75 to 150 and the hard water is 150 to 100. but over more than 100 uh, 100 to 150 ppm uh, ppm hardness is desirable Around 50 to 100 milligram of alkalinity, uh, milligram per liter of ppm of alkalinity is good, and it will give it will give an buffering systems. It will give an buffer systems to the water filter. And once the buffering capacity is better, once the once the water is stable, once the water is buffered, then it will give more productions. More the fluctuations of these parameters, more will be the disturbance in the health. More in the disturbance in the fit ecology or in the pond ecology and more in the disturbance in the fish food productions natural fish food productions also and uh, how to increase the alkalinity if you want to increase the alkalinity then we have to add calcium carbonate and uh, oyster cells limestones depending upon the soil pH and buffering capacity suppose the alkalinity is more then we have to reduce it by adding a uh, alarm around 25 to 50 kg per hectare is sufficient enough to reduce the pH. Sometimes we can add organic matter cow dung to reduce the alkalinity in the slurry form. In the slurry form, or we can apply gypsum also in the shrimp ponds. But uh, applications of this organic matter, uh, particularly cow dung, is not allowed in shrimp ponds. You may apply alum or you may apply gypsum to reduce the alkalinity. About Ammonia nitrate, nitrate already I have told you, and nitrate form of nit uh, nitrogen is somewhat stable. Nitrate, nitrogen is toxic, so we should not allow this nitrate, nitrogen. But uh, we may allow little a uh, amount of nitrate, uh, nitrogen. But however, ammonia should be nil or maximum 
point zero one to point zero five ppm can be tolerated, can be allowed, or can be. And suppose ammonia is more, then how to reduce it? I'll tell you that thing also. Usually, the second limiting factor is nitrogen is waste and photolytical matters and feed. And tan includes the ammonium ion that is a uh, and ammonia. And the proportion of ammonia increases with the increase in temperature and pH. Again, I have told you these parameters are highly interlinked. So when temperature will increase and pH will increase, definitely ammonia concentration will increase, and the ammonia will cause mass mortality immediately if it is not been tested properly, if it is not been measured properly. And I have told you, 0 0.05 can is allowed. Next, with the increase of temperature, how ammonia increases that I have shown to you, and how to reduce this uh, ammonia. Uh, to reduce ammonia, first you stop feeding for at least some days when ammonia is to be controlled. Then flush the pond with press water, then reduce the stock intensity, aerate the pond, apply commercially available euchre extract. Euchre is such a type of substance which can absorb this uh, ammonia. Yucca gel, ammo care, ammo absorb, and many other these uh, ammonia control uh, the products are there or ammonia reduction uh, uh, products are there. So those are to be used to by the farmers if uh, ammonia is there. And ammonia formation will be definitely there because we are adding every day tons and tons amount of uh, feed, fish feed which all the fish feeds are not being properly consumed by the fishes. The additional amount of feed which has been not used by the fishes, properly not consumed by the fishes that are being deposited in the pond bottom and causing the problem increasing the ammonia content, that has to be taken into account uh, by the applications of uh, yucca based products. Many yucca based products are now there. Also, in shrimp farming, now they are doing the shrimp toilets, shrimp toilets, and so that uh, this uh, bottom will be uh, remain clean and this ammonia concentration will be uh, less. And also we can use sanitizers, sanitizers, disinfectants to reduce this ammonia content. This is nitrogen cycles. I am not uh, going to discuss all those things. So I hear about the dose of cow dung and the urea and uh, single superphosphates, particularly cow dung, 10,000 kg. Whenever we are using cow dung, cow dung should be used in the slurry form and it should be used with the lime so that the pH will be in the higher range. Then urea, which contains more than 46% of nitrogen, that is should be used 200 kg per hectare per year. Then SSP, 300 kg per hectare per year. This is about the use of urea, SSP, and codong. Next, about alkalinity. Total alkalinity ranges, I have told you already, 75 to 200 ppm, but not less than 20 million. So definitely, the wafering system is the Definitely the wafering system uh, should be maintained with, uh, definitely the wafering system should be maintained and uh, very low and uh, total alkalinity enhance the microbial community. Very low and total alkalinity enhance the microbial community and affects the kinfish and selfish species by numerous pathogens. And remedies. Alkalinity can be increased by application of quick lime. I have told you already the application of quick lime, limestone, etc., concrete blocks and oyster cells, etc., to increase and excels also. Um, and organic manures may decrease alkalinity and by lowering the pH level. Then with regard to salinities, which is not required for the stress water culture, but however, it is very much important for uh, shrimp culture and salinity can be measured by refractometer and salinity should not be less than 15 ppt and the 15 to 25 ppt salinity is very much required for uh, uh, this. This is the salinometer, uh, refractometer. Um, so and this is very well used to by the farmers and by the students also for practical purpose and this is also a very good test to see the to see the sanity or to see then the other factors like hardness and uh, metals carbon dioxide hydrogen sulfide methane water depth light soil quality and the, the general aspects of the fish pond management like control of aquatic insects primary productivity stock density supplementary feeding health management also are in paramount importance to increase at the production level. Now, with regard to management guidelines, let us come. How the is you see the, this, these are the different ponds which is not managed properly. The proliferative growth of certain planktons. 
here slash remember the required plowing and uh, liming has not been done properly and uh, this pond is a good pond water quality has been managed water quality has been managed i'll show you some other ponds you see here this is the pond in this case what is to be done in this case it has to be applied the high dose of lime around 300 to 350 kg per hectare of lime depending upon the depth of the pond Mm, and uh, mm, then followed by the application of uh, minerals in a balanced way so that here it is the imbalance growth of uh, minerals or imbalance uh, availability of the minerals causes the growth of certain group of planktons whether it is the duplanktons whether it is the eulina bloom microcystis bloom or any other blooms they are actually one such uh, these elements will be more when it is uh, availability is more that causes the problem and here is the chlorella growth and uh, these are all unmanaged ponds just i'll tell you these are also some of the here in this case just i was showing you here use of applications of poultry matter which contains more amount of these uh, nitrogenous matters and this causes the problem this causes the problem and here uh, this ammonia formations is very common and it gives the bubbling in the pond sites and here also the growth of this area uh, algae this is a good managed pond so here uh, semi managed ponds but uh, again all these factors has to be monitored properly has to be monitored thoroughly before advocating certain things and uh, these are some of these varieties of bengal and these are hatcheries and which is not maintained properly for hatcheries these uh, uh, water quality testings is must and it should be measured very thoroughly very carefully before taking up the breeding sets breeding sets and also in the field conditions particularly whether it is farming whether it is sim farming or this fish farming without that how it the fish dies you just see this is the water quality indices i'm not going to yeah. again another thing is that I, just let me tell you about this a uh, one uh, this a uh, oxygen availability due to poor oxygen status particularly in silver carps and many other species also but particularly in silver silver carp you will find protrusion of lower jaw this is due to the availability of poor oxygen as well as due to minerals um, so by addition of uh, this a uh, little amount of minerals as well as uh, um, addition of adequate amount of uh, oxygen can avoid this problem so these are some of these uh, issues i have told you and i have not gone to disease aspects just i want to highlight the importance of water and its parameters and its uh, measurement through the different test kits and the water balance in the fresh water uh, they are fish so these fresh water fishes they are balancing their body with the uh, osmosis problems uh, with uh, osmosis and the uh, lateral line canal is there balancing all that and here stresses poor water quality and environmental conditions improper handling are the factors and most fish diseases are stressed and mediated through this uh, water quality problems here low level of mortality and if you think about the loading effects uh, if you uh, having more stocket density then do level will be less metabolic rate of the fish will be high amount of uh, feed uh, being consumed is high pathogen load will be more water resistance rate also has to be increased to make them survive uh, management recommendations if you think then maintain the water quality with suggested guidelines then we have to if we want to have good culture good crop or good productions then we have to maintain the um, water quality then maintain the fish loadings at optimum levels so actually whether it is three, 75 uh, numbers per square meter or uh, 100 number per square meter per inch of banami or it is a uh, 6000 to 10000 numbers of fingerlings per uh, hectare or um, in piece and that uh, if will in the greedy way if will stock more then water quality you have to manage properly to get better fractions and low diesel oxygen high carbon dioxide and the low ph high ammonia high nitrate all these things are not recommended at all not allowed at all so in that case it will invite so many other complications and good stuff to know it is 300 square feet of biofilter matter uh, per 100 pounds of this and uh, another thing is that odd 0.125 to 126 pounds of baking soda uh, per 100 gallons to maintain alkalinity and uh, are 0.275 to 
413 pounds of salt per 100 gallons to maintain the chloride levels. Don't make any rapid changes of water quality. I have told you rapid changes in case of the application of calcium oxide. It's a very much fatal because it causes stress to the fishes immediately. And with regard to water quality parameters suitable for fish culture, just I have given a, this a tablet form. Those that are interested can have a note down. Of, but I will tell you for all these test, ki, uh, test kits, uh, testing kits, they have their optimal range and they have their uh, they say, available, whatever available, just you compare with the optimal range. Um, for different companies, they have set also different things. And uh, for particularly temperature 20 to 28 degrees centigrade, dissolved oxygen more than 5, ammonia 0 0.05 or less, or nitrate 0 0.3 to 1.5, nitrite um, 0 0.001 ppm, pH 7.5 to 8.5 or 7 to 8.5 salinity like this. So different uh, these water quality parameters are there. And some soil quality parameters, pH is 6.5 to 7.5, organic carbon 1.5 to 2.0, phosphorus 6 to 12, nitrogen 50 to 75. And C and ratio, carbon nitrogen ratio, uh, particularly for biofuel farming, 10 to 15 or more than 15 uh, um, is good for fractions. And the soil texture is 70% clay. Um, plus 30% uh, silt and sand is required. Then with regard to optimum water quality requirement for fish pond, particularly fresh water, brackish water and salt water, these are some of these say, parameters, so water quality parameter, transparency, etc. So uh, these things also we have to follow. Um, uh, so whether it is turbidity less than 30 ppm um, for fresh water, brackish water is less than 30 and sea water is less than 30, like these different parameters. And these are the requirements uh, subsequent some 17 different parameters here it is giving so next uh, these are the different resources where i have collected all those things and uh, lastly let me put uh, special thanks to nice and uh, particularly soban babu and their team uh, which they have uh, made this attempt uh, to uh, arrange such a beautiful uh, webinar and uh, trust me it's not much more than casting a into the water. Just if we leave the fish and they will go with the net to get the fish, it is not possible. We have to keep the water in the adequate or optimal quality so that the production will be there. With this, let me put once again thanks to all and thanks to all these authorities of this uh, branded company, as well as uh, thanks to all the audience and uh, thanks to the participant other participants and i saw the various persons from different other states and uh, i personally thanks to all of them i have tried my level best uh, to give the best uh, within this uh, span of time but if any queries will be there still another 10 15 minutes will be there so we can discuss and the future we will keep relation this is my number uh, with this we can keep contact thank you thank you Sovano? Hello? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank so, you, sir. So now it is open for discussion, if anything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, yes. now may we proceed to the question and answer session? Yeah. Any questions? Any queries, please? Good afternoon, sir. Uh, good afternoon.